Issa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, but I Yeah, back on the sports rank zone, we continue with the football of the schoolboy variety, the Inter-Secondary School Sports Association. It's a Manny Cup semi-finals got underway earlier on Friday with Mona taking on 22-time champions, St. George's College. We have highlights with Donald Oliver and Dwight Jeremiah on commentary. Mona, Thomas trying to place that inside. you have another opportunity here. Oh, that's delightful from Thomas. Sends it inside and it held on eventually by to John Davis. Well, earlier he did do some good defensive work shepherding out the attack clock, but was bamboozled there. Reed sends it long. An opportunity for St. George's College. Ooh. Just spoke about that left foot. Just spoke about the moment. Didn't quite capture it. Yeah. Hakeem Bernard was rooted, wasn't he? Praying and hoping that that was off target, which is which it was. Yes. Lovely ball inside. And here's a shot from outside the area from Mackenzie. Mona will send another ball inside. Here it comes. The keeper halfway there and the head off the bar. Another big chance for Mona High to take the lead. Seem to be Gordon on the end of it. Let's have a look here. But yeah, got in front of the defender. Good header. Flush on the crossbar. It yeah. was Gordon. Yeah. Again, hopeful ball inside at the back post. And it's put away. Again, hesitancy at the back. And Mona High, they take the lead in this Manny Cup semi-final. Little bit hesitant, that long ball coming in. Let's have a look here. Yeah, just side-footed in. Yeah, it was Thomas. Here they come again. On his left foot, feeds it to Taylor. Taylor curling that one! That's magnificent! Sabir Taylor, one of the standouts of this team, finally gets his first goal this season. At Burkett laid it off to him. Didn't go for power here. Just measured that attempt, but it went in the direction of the goalkeeper. That's how precise it was, exquisitely done. Just look at it here. Yeah, it couldn't have been placed any higher, any lower and it would have hit the crossbar or the palm of the goalkeeper. Handled well by St. George's College. Peralto gets it again. Swings that one across the box. There's an appeal for a free kick inside the D. And they get it. Who will take it? It is Mackenzie! Mackenzie, that was first class. And Mona with the 2-1 advantage over St. George's College. Yeah, pace and precision was on that strike. Always going away from Davis. Hitting the side netting as well. The back sanction there of the goal. Yeah, he just took a step to his left. Parchment is also there. Goes straight into the wall. Gordon went straight to Davis. They need to hoof this upfield if they want to send a chance here. But Mona defending stubbornly. That is it! Mona Pride soars here at Sabina Park! Yeah, Mona High qualifying for the Manny Cup final for the first time in their history. A tremendous performance by Craig Butler's team. And they did it on the back of a wonderful free kick from their number 10, Denza McKenzie, to win the contest. Xavier Taylor had scored a beautiful goal for St. George's College to level as well after Ramarian Thomas had given Mona the lead. You know, Mariah, before Tuesday, both... Mona and St. George's College were unbeaten in schoolboy football this season. In the Champions Cup, St. George's College lost to Clarendon College. 
and Mona lost to Glenn Muir. So they came into today's match knowing that defeat would mean it's the end of their season. So imagine going unbeaten and in the course of one week, you lose back-to-back -back matches and that's the end of your campaign because that is what has happened to St. George's College. Yeah, I really feel it for St. George's because they started this season, you know, brilliantly. We spoke about all the positives coming out from this team. But this Mona team, and when Craig is at the helm of any team, I feel like you would be um, not very smart to bet against them because we've seen that spirit within the team. Uh, we saw they opened, they had the opening goal, they led for some time, then of course St. George's equalized, but Mona did not give them the opportunity to walk away with the points. Instead, you know, they found that um, they had the fight in them. And for me, Ricardo, I'd love to be there at halftime to hear what Craig says to them, to, you know, to just listen to that dressing room and see yeah. them come back out roaring. And I think this Mona, this Mona team is going in the right direction. And with Craig at the helm and with the youngsters, you know, that he's building with it's a team that very soon we may not be betting against yeah very much the case they got to the Manning Cup semi-finals last season and here they are one step further this time around a couple of things one I was concerned for Craig Butler when the final whistle sounded because mm -hmm. he sprinted onto the field and for a second I wasn't sure how far he could make it and I don't know if we can see that again at the end of the match when <laughs> Craig Butler sprinted onto the field. Here it is, yeah, and I think he just ran out of steam there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, he lifted him up, so... Wow. Yeah, but it, but it is a wonderful moment for this institution. Um, let me also say that Mona's football programme, um, the rebuilding, if you want to put it that way, or the building of this program started before Craig Butler. Yes. Craig Butler coming in was a continuation of what has been what had been started. Um, but Craig Butler coming in took it to a whole new level with the type of players that he brought in, with the system that he brought there. And what is for sure is that he has fast tracked um, the success. Um, of this Mona program um, because based on the trajectory that they were on maybe they would get there someday maybe five six seven years down the road um, but because of his input in the program they have gotten there significantly quicker and here they are in a Manning Cup final for the first time in their history and I would say that is quite a big deal. Tough luck for St. George's College um, being knocked out the 22-time champions. Kingston College, um, they are taking on Heidel in the second semi-final. We understand that there is a delay to the start of that contest and you can catch that match live on Sportsmax app and uh, that will be specifically on the Sportsmax Plus channel. Also, action in the Issa Schoolboy Football Competitions continue on Saturday with Glenn Muir playing Dean Till and Garvin Maceo taking on defending champions Clarendon College. This is in the Da Costa Cup and you can watch the game between Garvin Maceo and the Clarendon College on Sportsmax and the Sportsmax app starting at 3 p.m. in Jamaica. That's 4 ECT. Unfortunately, both the Costa Cup semi-finals are being played at the same time and we'll only be able to broadcast one and it is the defending champions Clarendon College against the previous winners Garver Maceo. So that should be a cracker. Let's take a break and come back with more. Remember, we have a special guest coming up in the last half an hour. Elaine, Mariah, do you have that type of voice? Fall. But the devil will know until the whistle blows around. 